Once again, all of us from Faith Celebration Fellowship, I want you to just go ahead, give them a big round of applause. We just want to tell them how much you appreciate them. God bless everyone for our time. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. You need to see this? Praise God. As it is, we actually call it Friend Day, but it does coincide with our anniversary. The reason why we focus on Friend Day is because we just don't want to celebrate this birthday of our church or congregation or fellowship among ourselves. More than anything, we know that there's a lot of things that are good going on around here, and we do want to share it to our friends, people who are very, very close to us, people who are very special in our lives. We actually have 
creatively entitled it, not just fan, we used to have it friendly for so many years. We started doing Frantastic Day. Frantastic Day. F R A N stands for friends, relatives, acquaintances, and neighbors. It's no longer just friends, but that's for every one of you. So whether you're here as a friend or a relative, an acquaintance, or a neighbor, somehow you are one because of some commonalities or shared experiences. You do have common family ties, um, common careers or similar careers perhaps. You get the same likes and dislikes. And there's a lot more things that somehow you share with your friend. But today my concern is to address something that you and your friends have similarities about, but something that goes much deeper than the surface similarities or sameness or commonalities you have. But in fact, I'd like to talk to you about something you and your friends or your family members or relatives or neighbors have that are so much in common, but it goes much, much deeper than a lot of things that concern us or a lot of similarities we have. In fact, I'd like to talk to you today about the deepest needs that you have and you'll be surprised how I would say this deepest need that you have is not just exclusively or uniquely yours. Every single one of your friends or relatives or loved ones, if you're having a difficult time today, or you're having a wonderful time all together, somehow somebody shared that with you. And somebody is sharing that with you. Okay, and this is something that I'm gonna touch on. We read First Kings 10, 23 to 25 a while ago. We don't have to read it again. But that was a verse, or those were verses that spoke about the grandness or the grandeur of somebody we probably remember as King Solomon and how this king is recognized even in our history as perhaps the greatest king who ever, or the richest king. I would not say he was the greatest king, but I would say greatest when it comes to wisdom. That too, somehow I will question a little bit because you will question that a little bit too a little later as I approach the story. But he was given wisdom that is far above all wisdoms of other kings before. He was given riches, so much riches that he would come up as even richer than the richest person in the world today. If you would compute the things that the Bible describes as his possessions. But you and your friend does have, or your friends do have, some deepest needs in life that are very, very common. And you share it. And as I share this to you, and somehow bring it up to the surface, and you become an assessor of that, and you become more knowledgeable, probably more conscientious of that, then when you spend time with your friends, you'll be able to understand each other better, or perhaps you'll be able to address each other's needs much more, and speak to each other more sensibly, instead of talking about basketball games, which are beautiful, but now you can actually address the issues, not just on the surface, of the smiles on their faces, but things that touches their hearts deeply. Sometimes our friends may be looking at us and they're smiling at you, but deep inside there may be tears flowing in their hearts. And that you want to touch. So the first thing I'd like to speak to you about in the commonality of your deepest need has something to do with time. How each one of us relate to time. So many of us when it comes to experiences, I would say when it comes to relating to time in regards to experiences, many of us somehow are concerned about life when it comes to the things that has happened to us. We concentrate a lot about things that have happened to you and me. And you probably know people like that. They could not move on in life for the reason that their concentration or their minds are focused on their yesteryears. Some of them focus on the beautiful things that they have experienced before. Like many of you probably are great achievers in your lives. You go back to your high school days and you remember you were the president of the student body, cool. Okay, you probably, look, those of us who are probably at my age right now, you probably boast about some better figures which we had before. We, we tell our friends, and I've spoken to people like this, Pastor, you should have seen me before. I, I, I was full of muscles. And sometimes it's hard to believe. You know, and you may want to ask, what happened? You know, but it's something that people actually tell you. I, and we, we talk about the curves, we talk about how great your looks were. On the other hand, there are people who think of the past and relate with the past in their lives, and their lives are stuck to it, not because of the beautiful things that gives them pride. But these people remember a lot of painful things that they have experienced in the past. 
Probably these people have friends who betray them. I don't know about you. Do you have friends who have ever betrayed you? Raise your hand if you have. Any friend who has betrayed your trust. It hurts, doesn't it? There are some of you probably here in this room who have spouses who have cheated on you. If you have spouses who have cheated on you, raise your hands. No, no. Especially, especially if your, your, your husband is with you, all right? But you probably have people here in this church who have spouses who have cheated on you. And that hurts much more so because these people are people that you have considered in your lives as somebody who would love you the most. And they're the ones who actually hurt you the most. Some people have been subjected to very, very embarrassing situations. There were bullies at school, or probably we've looked up to some people, and instead of them encouraging us and making us feel like we're better people or good people, they put us down, they cursed you, they called you names, they called you like a loser and all those things that embarrass you in front of your friends and whip you and whack you behind in front of your classmates or scolded you in front of your friends. And you somehow felt very sorry for yourselves and now you're walking with a lot of inferiority complex. You don't like the way you look, you don't like the way you carry yourself and somehow there's so much pain in you and you're stuck to that because of all those experiences. And there probably have been people who may have abused you in various ways. Verbally, sexually, and so many other ways that a person can be abused. So in this regard, people living in the past Many of us actually would walk with our shoulders squared, with our heads lifted high, and some would pride saying, I did this and I did that. Well, in the meantime, there are those who are somehow settling in the past, whose, whose heads are hanging in shame, or perhaps whose teeth are being ground in anger, and probably their, their clenched or fist, or, or, or their, their fists are clenched because of the pain and the anger that they feel inside of them and they want revenge or somehow they want to do away with all those experiences but they could not erase this from their past. But for those people, both of them have similarities and that is they're both stuck somewhere. So in relation to this, happenings and experiences in time, some of us go beyond that and we go to the things that are happening right now. And many of us here in this room may have actually or may actually be experiencing this. And you know people probably are like this. They don't care any longer about what happened in the past. They don't give a thought about what's going on in the future. I exist only for what's happening right now. And many times these are people who are like compulsive buyers. They would just keep on buying and accumulating stuff. Somehow the satisfaction comes in catering to the needs of the moment. And the sad part regarding that is in this commonality of experience between our friends. Okay, is that we spend and spend and spend for the now. And what happens is, in our experiences, I've noticed that there are some people, especially newlyweds, who would actually spend and spend and spend, issue checks and use their credit cards, and accumulate or purchase probably in one year, or even months, or probably even in a day, what it took 10, 20, or even more years for their parents to accumulate. But they just want everything right now. They get involved, they, they somehow satisfy the cravings of their flesh too. Where I enter into a, some kind of relationship and do things without a thought of what's gonna happen in the future. I get involved in some business deals that are not really good because it'll be satisfying right now my needs for cars and bigger houses, fancier clothes, and. Uh, latest gizmos and videos, and we've got a lot of people who do that. One of the latest news that you've heard probably has shocked you about a certain group of people who they said probably has done a crime or committed a crime that's bigger than ever, okay, against the government to a tune of a hundred something million dollars.